Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own design system in Figma. So let's get started. The reason I'm doing this is because if you're new to UX UI design, then you will find this super helpful as this will speed up your design process and it will help you be more consistent with your designs. This is the first in a video series about how to create the design system. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the first step, which is typography. So now let's switch the screen and start working. So the first thing you have to do in order to create this typography skill is to have a template like this, which will contain six headings and free body text. If you don't want to create your own, you can download the one that I linked in the description below. After you download the file or you create your own, the next thing you have to do is go to typescale.com. Now let me show you how you can use this website to create your own typography scale. So the first thing you have to do is to select your base size, which is either 14 pixels or 16 pixels. So in our case, we're going to use 14 pixels. So we're just going to type 14 pixels. And as you can see, the font has changed. Now, the second thing you have to do is to select your scale. Now, this depends a lot on the design that you want to achieve. If you want to achieve a design like Future, who has like huge text and it's very ballsy, then you should probably pick a scale like the golden ratio. But if you want to use this design system to create multiple digital products, I will suggest you to either select perfect fourth or the major third. So in our case, we're going to pick the major third. Now that we have our base size set and our scale set, we can translate this into our design system in Figma. As you can see, I split my screen into sites so I can see the values from typescale.com and be able to translate those into our typography design system. So now the only thing that you have to do is to translate these values to your headings and your body text. So we're going to start with our 14 pixel size, just because we chose that to be our base size. Our base size will be our body text. So what we're going to do is to make sure that our body text is at 14 pixels, which it is. Now, the second one will be our body large, which is 17 pixels. So we're going to go and just we're just going to copy this and we're just going to make sure that our body large text is 17 pixels. Now, the small body text is 8 pixels, but I usually prefer to have it as a minimum of 10. So I make sure that it's accessible and everyone can read it. So now our body text is 10 pixels, 14 pixels and 17. And we keep this process for all our headings. So for example, the next heading will be 21 pixels, 21.88, so 22 pixels. This will be our heading six. Our heading five will be 27 pixels, 27 pixels. And we're gonna repeat this for every single step. So the next one will be 27, the next one will be 34 and 42. As you can see, the scale has run out. So what we will need to do is just click this plus button and this will generate another heading. So for example, now that we hit the plus button, type scale just generated a new heading for us, which is 30, 53 pixels. So we're just gonna translate that value into our heading two. And then afterwards we're gonna hit plus once again, and we're going to have our final heading, which is 67 pixels. So this is it. This is all you need to do to create your own typography scale into your design system. But what I would like to do just to keep things organized, I like to group these and then use the Figma auto layout just to keep everything nice and neat. And let me show you how you can do that. You just select your headings, you push command G or control G to group them. And then afterwards you click on auto layout. Once you click on auto layout, you will select here the distance between the headings that you want to have all the time. So for me personally, I prefer around 15 pixels just to keep everything nice and organized. I'm just gonna drop these underneath. So now you can see that my headings are neatly organized. The next thing you have to do is to click on every single heading and make sure that here you have hug contents. 
selected it. And you do this for all your headings. This will ensure that every single time you change the text or the height of the heading, everything will be nicely organized. Let me show you. So let's do this really quick for all our headings. Make sure we select all of them and hit hog contents on every single one. Now that we have this, let me show you. So if we go and we change this to 100, for example, you see that the spacing changes. But let's see what happens if we change the value of 67 to 190. As you can see, if we drag this, you see everything has been kept nicely organized and the distance is equal. So that's why I like to do this extra step just to make sure that if I use this document on another project, and I change the font or the font size, I, it will be still organized. The last thing we're going to do is to do the same thing we did for the headings to our body text. So we're just going to select this free text that we have, Control G or Command G, and then afterwards select Auto Layout. Make sure that we have a distance of like, let's say, same 15 pixels. That sounds good. Then afterwards you click on this and make sure you have hog content or hog content selected for every single one. And there you go. This is how you create your typography scale, which you can reuse on every single project that you have. So this is the first tip from our design system. The next one that we're going to talk about is how you can create your perfect color palette and the same thing that we created for the typography. We're going to do a system that will allow you to reuse the same structure for all other projects. I hope you find this useful and then you're going to continue watching this video series that I'm going to create because at the end of it, you're going to have a design system that you're going to be able to use in all your future projects. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care.